The other group that I, I've worked with, I work with several groups, but this group I've worked with since 1994, and I'll keep kind of referring to some of the things we've been doing. It's the National Institute for Trauma and Loss, and I think it's on your handout. There's a link on there. If you go to that website, you know, after the presentation, you can find quite a bit of information, and we keep putting up stuff all the time because we keep finding out new things about um, what I'm going to talk about during the morning here is about trauma-informed approaches, uh, looking through the lens of how do we address in them, as I said in the, um, the title, in a conscious and mindful way, how do we address people, particularly children, who have been traumatized. And uh, the person I work with there, uh, Bill Steele, I met him in 1993 after he came back from Kuwait. He was sent by the U.S. government, actually, to go to Kuwait, not military. But he went there because, remember, there was a Gulf War then, and there were people traumatized in Kuwait. And nobody knew what to do about that, and Bill, being a trauma expert at the time, he's a social worker, went over there to work with survivors of that, families that had lost a loved one, some of the children, do some training with the professionals. But what happened while he was there, two things. Actually, one thing was language was hard. There was, it was hard to work through the translations and the interpreters. But the second thing he realized was kind of spontaneously, it came to him kind of just as an epiphany, that he needed to use something experiential. So he started to have people draw. Uh, and actually, that's how we met. He, on the, he had brought the first book that I had written about working with kids in violent homes with him on the airplane, which must have been like this, I don't know, 24-hour flight to get to Kuwait. <laughs> he never read it. <laughs> and then on the way back, he read it cover to cover, and he thought, yeah, now this makes sense. You know, you can't just sit here and try to have a conversation with people. You need to engage their senses somehow. And that's all about what the expressive arts are about and art therapy is about. And I think any kind of thing, play, yoga, you know, all you know, the different kinds of uh, body therapies that you can use are all about getting to the stories in a different way through the senses. And for some reason, he started to see almost immediately in the people that he was working with some really profound changes, comfort level changing. Uh, able to put things out and express things that they were not able to say in words. Uh, and, and it wasn't just, he realized this isn't just about the language difference or the culture difference. There's something connected between sensory experiences and trauma and the sensory nature of the arts themselves. And he was a social worker. He said, I'm not an art therapist, I'm not an artist, but I knew I had to have them put something on paper. 